the cut up. Yes. Loud it go out. Just for a second. Uh, came back on. Continuing to be in your breath, grounding yourself. Big thanks, Dakota. So beautiful. And um, from here, we're going to move into um, a different form of prayer, uh, prayer with words. And um, I'm going to pin, uh, can I pin myself? Uh, yeah. And I'm going to move out of the seat here and invite uh, Hoshin in with another dear friend and um, spiritual companion and has offered to kindly uh, lead us in a short prayer um, to start the call. Yeah. Um, is there any way I can see that, see everybody? Yeah, let's see. We can see. Do you want to not be big screen? I would rather not be big screen. Anybody? Well, I don't know if it's because videos are off. Oh, hey. Yes, there you go. Uh, so great to be with you all today and thank you for having me. Um, yeah, Dan asked me to uh, offer us a prayer uh, about connection, about all of our relations, about the uh, Lakota invocation, Mitakuye Oyasin, and all of and all of the richness that that invocation invites. So, uh, let's begin by establishing our posture wherever you are on this earth. Let's find our roots, find our feet, find our seat, and find that central axis that runs through all of us. Find that central energy channel that holds our head up high and and uh, connects the uh, heavens and the earth, the north and the south. Let's find that central axis, that spine, that backbone, that that is the bridge that does allude to that bridge between heaven and earth. We are all we are all bridges between heaven and earth today. And let's begin by giving thanks for this vehicle, this beautiful, this beautiful, painful, uncomfortable, capable, dynamic body in all of its ups and downs, the vehicle with which our soul and our spirit can encounter the physical world. Let us give thanks for that body. And let us give thanks for the wind, the breath that moves through it. Sometimes that breath that that is uh, that comes through will, that comes through that comes through us, consciously and unconsciously. Just give thanks for all of the ways our bodies, our vehicles respond to that breath, the cells that rejuvenate and react and respond and reconnect and reinvigorate and find all the other cells and through which the reconnect the connections within these bodies are rejuvenated time and time again. So let's take a breath to celebrate all of those connections within. And then let's move outward one layer or two layers to the to the epidermal layer, to the skin. To the skin that connects us, that is the boundary between all of our insides and our outsides. Feel the wind on your skin, feel the temperature. 
feel energy, feel vibratory sensations. Now let's give thanks for how those keep us in connection with the greater wider world. Another breath in celebration for that connecting layer, that which protects us and that which connects us. And then let us move outward two, three, four, four hundred layers to all of the creatures and the fauna and flora around us. Let us give thanks for our families, for relationships, for connections, the people that we may even like the least and yet somehow mysteriously love the most because they are our mirrors. Those relationships and connections in our lives that are that are simultaneously challenging and at the end of the day when we've done the work when we've been in our practice the ones that are challenging may also be the most nourishing because they are the way that we can see ourselves in the world and notice our impact and notice how the world impacts us it is in those relationships that are the most challenging and oftentimes the most in the most triggering. Let us give thanks for those relationships, whether they be family, our closest family members, our mothers, our fathers, our friends, our co-workers, our, our second families, our third families, our acquaintances, and those ever so sacred relationships that arise spontaneously, the ones that may arise so spontaneously that they're gone as just as instantaneously as they arose, may it be. Maybe it was the person you saw at the bus stop, the person you made eye contact with uh, on the subway or at a traffic light. All of those are sacred relationships. Maybe there was eye contact or maybe there wasn't eye contact. Maybe it was contact of the energetic field where we felt each other's presence without words. Let us give thanks and celebrate such sacred relationships as they arise. And let us welcome in and invite in and make promises and commitments to notice when those sacred offerings of relationship are brought right to our doorstep. They can happen at any time. Any time. Let us stay open on our mind, body, heart, and soul that such sacred relationships arise that have no timeline, have no timeline, have no chronology, that shake and shatter our ideas about relationships having to exist on some sort of set timeline or set chronology or set some set, like some set of social norms or rules for what's appropriate all of these sacred relationships go far beyond anything that the human mind can create so let us celebrate those and then let's open ourselves in celebration to those creatures beyond beyond our own species let us consider those relationships in the domestic animals that support us and in the wild animals that lead us and in the domestic animals that lead us and in the wild animals that support us. Let us always consider the sacred relationships that are available to those others in bodies, whether they have two legs, four legs, six legs, eight legs, or 100 legs. No, there is no set species or type of body when it comes to these sacred relationships. There is no cognitive language that limits these relationships. All of these sacred relationships exist in one universe under all creation. Let we, let us give thanks for the wise trees of hundreds of years. Let us give thanks for that young sapling outside who hasn't been 
alive that long on earth and yet carries the lineage of all of the trees and the fauna and the flora that came before and after them. Let us celebrate and give thanks for the creepy crawlies, for the worms that compost our food and enable physical form to move through its cycles, for that which biodegrades to degrade and return to the earth, to return to the mother, to return to source. Let us celebrate earth cycles that connect us all. Let us celebrate all of the phases and stages in those cycles, the beautiful and the ugly and the ugly and the beautiful. Each phase, each form so beautiful and so ugly and so connected and yet so disconnected to the point that there is neither connection nor disconnection and there is only, only being. And let us give thanks, finally, for that which is not physical. Let us give thanks and celebrate the mysteries, the energies that move us all, that we can feel, that we can, that we can perceive with our five, six, ten senses. And let us celebrate the greatest and deepest potential of this universe and this existence. Let us celebrate the energies that we cannot perceive, the energy and the creation and the destruction that is absolutely beyond our human perceptions. Let us celebrate the, the possibility and the potential and the past and the lineage of that which is beyond this prayer, beyond these words, and beyond us, and yet also deeply a part of us, a part of us as one species, as one race, as form, as consciousness, that unity and that nothingness that is above and beyond and yet completely within us. As unified hearts, as separate people, as individuals that contract and expand. Let us hold it all. Let us evoke and be awash in the grace of this infinite expansion and contraction. Let us be awash in the grace of all that connects us. Let us be awash in the grace of all that is connection. In all that is true and in all that is love, I pray. Aho mitakuye oyasin. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, thank you, Hoshin, for such a beautiful prayer and such a beautiful celebration to start this call and continue this call. And continuing this call, I want to um, express gratitude for each one of you being here, um, for being uh, alive at this time, for being on this call at this time. Um, very precious to have you all here uh, together. And uh, next we're going to move into um, 
relationship. We're going to go into breakout rooms and explore our prayers, each of our prayers. What is it that we um, want to change? What is it that we want to grow into, to nurture, to cultivate? Um, and I invite this reflection on an individual level. Perhaps it's something you want to change in your individual culture and in your individual being. Um, or on a community level, or an organizational level, or state level, or global level, whatever level you are working with. Um, the invitation for the breakout room will be to um, share your prayer. What is it that you want to change? Something that perhaps um, you want to do that you currently can't do, or that you might need support with from outside of yourself. Um, and also, what actions are you taking to bring that to life? Um, and you might want to share challenges you're facing, support you're seeking, um, you know, perhaps challenges you're seeing and support you're offering. Um, yeah, so hold the invitation loosely. And again, uh, the intention is for relationship and connection too. So really listen and be with the people or person that you're with and um yeah we hope that uh, real connections and relationships are formed here on this call uh, so for the next um 12 minutes or so um you will be in uh, either a dyad or a triad and um yeah then we'll come back as a whole group and uh, come back everybody welcome back um yeah, I hope you had a nice connection. Um, and we're just going to give some space, a couple minutes here, if anybody wants to unmute and speak out a prayer, just a sentence or two, just to maybe hear what uh, people are bringing in or people are calling forth. Um, so we'll give a couple minutes if anybody feels called to unmute and maybe speak something into the group. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to speak to gratitude of being here. and. Um, with this collection of amazing people. So I don't know if that counts as a prayer, but it's what's alive for me right now. Amen. Aho. Mm -hmm. May I, Anna and Zoe, spread what we shared in this group, because we, the three of us spoke about uh, kindness and caring. And I wanted to share <laughs> kindness and caring. Um, that's it. We were talking about our prayer to be okay enough to make mistakes. And um, yeah, with each other, with ourselves. <laughs> and Shivani shared how this year he made an intention to make as many mistakes as possible. And in that moment, I don't know, Shivani, I thought it was a mistake that you left the breakout room. <laughs> I made the mistake. I made the mistake. I was like, shit, how do I go back? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that perfect though it was like embodiment of your prayer in the moment <laughs> may we learn to listen deeply and from the heart to one another Yeah, may we learn to keep having humility and saying, I don't know how to do this. Can I get some help? And also listening with inquire to our bodies because we are always withering. We, we, we we are on our, our journey to to that. So, how do we make this interesting? 
hoist hoist this pain I feel unique or why do I forget these things? Because maybe nature also forgets sometimes. Why should why should we be different than her? We talked about the way you can bring vulnerability into a culture as uh, an offering, a, a challenge to the idea we have to pretend our mastery and our knowledge. And sometimes someone asks a question just saying, I have no idea and seeing what comes out of that space. And uh, our vulnerabilities are an invitation to community to recognize we need each other. Beautiful. We have space for one or two more shares if anybody feels called to share. I, I, <laughs> I just want to share something that came up in my mind after the conversation. Um, in the breakout room is like learning how to forgive yourself, forgive yourself for the past and the present moments where you make mistakes, where you stumble, and you don't catch yourself. So yeah, just to just forgive, forgive myself. <laughs> <laughs> you want to join? Uh, okay, there we are. There we are. Okay, so I'll open the floor to you four and. Um, yeah, again, I'll try to stay out of the way as much as possible. Uh. Hey. <laughs> hey. Mm. So good to see all of you. Amisha, the three of us were just in a breakout room, so it's it's cool to meet you over here, too. Hi. <laughs> nice to be with you all. Hi, Misha. Hey. I feel like we're four little fishies just dropped into a little fishbowl, and it's like, <laughs> hey, why don't you make culture together? Each one of you comes from a different cultural background, and you're going to try and do this in different ways. How do you navigate that? Mm. Awkwardly. <laughs> Plenty of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it wouldn't be normal if it were, 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 wasn't awkward, I think. Uh, that could maybe be a little door to open up and step into. Uh, like normalizing awkwardness and realizing awkwardness is probably sacred. Uh, flipping the script is on, on what we may, might perceive to be uh, normal or normative. Uh, I don't think it gets more radical activist uh, against the system than awkward. Awkward like breaks down economies. <laughs> you could literally go to any institution and be awkward and it's like a threat. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. And it, it's such an interesting thing to hear the sharebacks from the, the other prayers and this theme of like, yeah, being messy and, and making mistakes, <laughs> being vulnerable and being awkward. And it's such a contradiction to this, this norm or this perfectionist, you know, we have to figure it out and, and know the way to go. And, and I think one of the most powerful places to be for change and um like is the unknown is being like I don't know we don't think know yet here we are oh we're gonna like roll up our sleeves and we're gonna try something together um and and experiment and then and then fail and learn from those mistakes um did we lose Amisha yeah I'll try to find her I don't, I don't know what happened we were too awkward. 
<laughs> I think she dropped off the call. It might be like yo. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's really, really hard to to be in in that unknown space of of change. Um, I know for myself, working with organizations that are that are uh, set on on going somewhere different and not know how to get there, it brings up a lot of anxiety um, to be to be uh, slowing down to think deeply about what where they are actually at and 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 what might be underneath that and what might need to change and shift um, in order to go where they want to go. Um, and so I think, yeah, definitely acknowledging and almost just accepting that we're going to try our best and that we're going to make mistakes and bringing some humor um, to that process helps to um, soften the soil for some new seeds to be planted. I'm half expecting you to whip out your clown nose. Because I know the last time I met you was that last year's Ecoversities conference and you taught a thing on clowning. And I even see some other people here from that same uh, same session. Uh, yeah, Hitori was there. Um, and I remember we were just making weird sounds at each other. And I was like, oh, okay. So this is what an educational conference is, is like. I'm, I should come back again. This is great. <laughs> oh, Hitoko. Yes, Hitoko. Sorry, I got the name wrong. Yes. The Misha is on her way back. She just mm. got booted off the internet. It's coming back. So. See. Yeah, I think that's definitely the opposite of a red flag in terms of liberation work is if you get in or you see awkward vibes or there's a slight sense of awkwardness. And I think there's like levels of awkwardness. There's awkwardness that's like threatening and a bit traumatic. And there's awkwardness as in, I wonder am I alone seeing this moment or feeling this moment or being in this moment right now? Uh, so so, so I'm, I'm, I'm specifically talking about like that, 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 that awkwardness, the awkwardness we like thinking you alone. And and I think all of us, uh, so little sort of uh, thing that I maybe can share is is sort of one of a practices, a practice of 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 homecoming or coming home. Uh, I've been doing uh for the first time in my life, like I took a course. Uh I've been seeing these courses, I've you know, the whole uh, COVID thing put made like courses like readily available before course was like the word course mean institutional or stuff like that but now I come onto the internet and I check oh there's courses and I took this crazy course in like um, leadership a uh, courageous leadership uh, because that's like so what I shared to everybody in the breakout room was that this year I say to myself and I and I oof in reflection like I definitely think definitely about the experiment thus far uh, in terms of the energy levels of it. But I said to myself, uh, I, I want to try to allow myself to make the most mistakes that I've ever ever done in a year, in this year. Oof, I wish you guys saw me at the beginning of this year, how I look and how I look now. Like I've been embodying this in such crazy ways. And, and and to come back to this leadership course uh, as one of the mistakes, mistakes, there is the word mistake has been obviously, or not obviously, but has been mutated and has grown uh, tentacularity or has grown tentacles. And it has shapeshifted so many times, the word mistake or yeah, is not any more passive or as solid as, as the mindset that sort of once held it or understood it. Uh, the word mistake is actually sort of the only thing that, that I think we all have in common. It's probably the, 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 the prayer that holds us and brings us all to this mere conversation is a moment of awkwardness, and or awkwardness, a moment of a mistake, a moment of queerness. Uh, 
all of these words that like mean things that like we feel when they mean things or they're held by specific culture groups or communities they actually all like speak about a sense of curiosity beyond borders a curiosity beyond our imaginations a curiosity beyond our bodies uh and and that space is a space of mistakes um uh, in my work and yeah in the space in my practice with young people in 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 liberation spaces of freedom free spaces i think as a body and a mind that has been held by institution i don't have the language words senses smell or or ability to see freedom or liberation and and that has troubled me as like doing or coming to spaces speaking about liberation and freedom and people listen listening so deeply to your words about freedom as if they know what you're talking about yet we are like i don't think we've grounded on what freedom is or what it smells like or what it tastes like and and i started to find freedom in awkwardness as in this could be possibly what we're fighting for this could be possibly a site of liberation of 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 this thing because these young people in my life they so awkward <laughs> you know what i mean uh, in the most gentle most inspirational most beautiful and sacred way the way they show up is so disruptive it's so anarchist it's so like if breaking down the system like 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 and not 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 in the ways of course me and my captured mind use these words to to describe their actions however their actions come from the sacred space and they they don't yet frame mistakes as with such harsh thoughts or with such heaviness mistakes is like yeah it's 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 a very simple gentle word in their world and yeah or pose that that there is sort of a prayer that opened up with regard to freedom in awkwardness mistakes and these words As we navigate these threads, I'm actually trying to keep track of the different pieces in the Miro board that we have. So I just pop that link in there. That's one of the ways that I tend to find coherence. And I'll just post one, I guess, one comment on the making of mistakes. The reason that I asked if it was okay to make mistakes is because for me, that gives me a sense of safety. I'm sure there's mistakes I could make with you that would actually be unforgivable and have you say, you know, you know what, Narayan, we want you out of this. Dan unspotlight him. But at least knowing that we're like maybe I'll cut you off, maybe I'll take up too much airtime. I encourage you to cut me off. Um I think the more lenient we can be as a norm with each other, we'll actually find a bit more flow with each other. But I'm I'm curious about what other threads might be alive within within this space that we may choose to follow together. Hi everyone. Um, I'm so sorry about the having to be late and then the internet. Um, and yeah, it kind of brings up like the current challenge that I'm really facing um, in my life at the moment. Um, which, yeah, it's really interesting. Like as somebody that spent you know my my twenties and most of my thirties like with a big appetite for you know how can we change things? How can we shift stuff? and i never really understood like why certain people just got busy with like what they were doing in their day-to-day -day life and why they didn't care so much and um i'm in a situation now where um i'm looking after my mum who has parkinson's and now dementia and it's and i'm find it's all consuming for one and it's constantly shifting and evolving and then her needs are changing and um and kind of and you know it's really bringing to my attention like how broken so many of the systems are um especially around care around family structure around um even just like you know i don't have other friends that are going through the same thing um 
maybe I have friends like 20 years older than me that are like, oh yeah, my dad's got Alzheimer's. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's like a different, it's a different thing. Cause I'm also facing like that, like a completely different shift. My father passed a couple of years ago. So I'm kind of, and then I've been like with my mum since then. And before, before that, like my work um, through the work, um, all that we are, which is the future, we used to be called the future is beautiful. And I was in like this very deep exploration around the these this the intersection of activism and spirituality and ecology and politics and you know sustainability and how how the answers to things, even though like in a very like we don't know the answers, but we'll just spend lots of time like in that process of of learning and unlearning and discovery and um and seeing what emerges between us. And, and I guess I'm in this place where I'm, I'm feeling like, um, actually what I think is probably a more realistic place for so many people in the world that, um, as one of my friends said, you know, we would be having, um, a creative spiritual, um, renaissance right now, if, most of the world wasn't just trying to you know body and soul together keep, you know keep things together keep food on the table keep like ahead of all the things and you know I I'm I'm coming from I'm Indian heritage but I'm coming from the UK and obviously it's a privileged place but it's also like right now you know it's there's like um I was there's half a million people that are like about to be evicted because they can't pay their rent like it's you know think everything's going up and so the pressure cooker is just like ch -ch -ch -ch. and so I'm really curious because so many of the things that I've explored in the last 20 years um around connection um have in this hyper-capitalized world that we're in, like, you know, I was able to travel, I was able to go on retreats, I was able to host retreats, I was able to, to study all these different modalities and all of it took like time and money and spaciousness. I was able to go to really interesting conferences and unconferences and gatherings and be with people that were discussing like these things. And, and I guess I'm curious, like, when the when the pressure of life kicks in um how do we then support each other because one thing that I've felt in myself is like despite knowing all these people that like you know where we share all these shared values like it's not many people have reached out knowing that I'm in this really quite isolated situation I'm fine but but you know it, it would also be nice to to feel more supported and I don't have a village you know being like an immigrant family don't have relatives here um and also it just being out of sync like age age range wise and that kind of thing um so I'm really curious like how do we create communities of care and practice and um and like real connection um when there's so much pressure and and also so many of our interactions, you know, are like in texts, which as much as you can get a lot from a text conversation, it doesn't, it doesn't touch your soul in the same way as human connection, or like if someone was here to help, help me take my mom to the toilet or something, you know? Um, so yeah, that's my question. It's big and it's messy and it's awkward. <laughs> and, um, and and I have no idea what the answer is because I'm just like trying to make it through. And in the, in the meantime, trying to work out, like, does the project that I have spent 10 years working on that apparently has provided a lot of value for people and really helped them along the way. I'm like, can I even still do it? Like, is, is it, you know, partly from me, but also partly because people are all stopping their their subscriptions because of all the crunches that they're in and so then you, it's like it gets even crunchier and crunchier and crunchier and then like how crunchy can we go I guess with these things <laughs> is is the question that I have so I'm just gonna throw all that into the mix um yeah damn Amisha 
<laughs> I love I, I love, love it. I really love that you brought up like the reality of capitalism and these like in these structures of um nuclear family homes that that don't uh that have real limitations in 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 what it actually requires to take care of our elders or our young I am a single mom and I I feel that like all the time like oh my god I just need someone to like clean the toilet like I I have and yet like I'm I'm I can't afford to hire a cleaning lady and uh yeah uh so I I kind of am with you in the unknown of of like in the city in Jojage Montreal where I live like having community and also uh it's it's like that that care is really there emotionally and and intellectually and and physically when I ask for it <laughs> you know like but I really need to ask for it and I have to be okay with being that person that's like yeah can you help me clean my house and I know I feel shame come up as soon as I say it I feel like I should be this kind of like person mother who can do everything and like and I'm not and uh that I, it is something I'm still I guess it connects to the enoughness of like being enough in my uh imperfection or in my non-superhumanness that I am just a human one little human and uh and that and I feel shame come up around not having those communities of care because it's so much of what I, I I'm doing in with groups of people is creating cultures of care and and support so that people can work together in a way that's like more human and relational and whole that is striving towards belonging and making enough you know like conscious awareness of how our structures have separated us and divided us on all these identity factors and that power is really not shared equally structurally and so then when I'm in my life and I'm like, I haven't figured it out, I feel all this shame. And then I have to remind myself, I'm like, I'm also in these structures and that I can't individualize my, my, um, my lack of not my, my lack because I am, I'm part of this. Um, and so, yeah, like, I, I feel like I, I personally have had to work with capitalism and, you know, figure out how how to mm, mm, kind of tap into like a a, 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 a a mental space of abundance for for um monetary and non-monetary supports and that comes and goes I feel like my mentality of alignment with abundance I I can fall into scarcity thinking um which I know is this like kind of, you know, Im generational immigrant hypervigilance of just like take take care of yourself first. Um, and yet I also do know that 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 when I ask for help, it comes. And so I'm trying to lean into that more. And even if it's just having people come and eat with us, it, it makes a difference to uh, feel like we're not so alone um, and that we are, you know, uh, in relationship to a village as imperfect as it, as it is. Um, and I think also like for the, uh, I feel like I live one life in the city in this, this kind of, uh, uh, more individual home, although my neighbors are awesome and I, and I, and I am in deep relationship with them. I think it's, uh, there's another part of my life that is very out there and strange. And it's, 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 you know, these 11 people that bought land together in a really complicated way, because we don't own, we don't want to own the land because it's not ours to own. It's indigenous land. It's, it's, it's not something that can be possessed. And yet, we do see our ourselves wanting to live more collectively um, and on the land in a way that that sees us into into elderdom together, and then and that and that and that is a dream, and it comes with so many real challenges also, and and how to work together uh, in a good way. Um, 
and it comes with also privilege of having had, you know, um, the money to buy that land. And, and, uh, and so I, I, I'm not exactly sure how to now really embody those, uh, that community of, of care when even I myself have limitations of how much I can give to others. Um, so being okay to receive help, I think is one place I can, I can work on and grow. I'm curious, Narayan, I want to hear what you're thinking about over there. I'm smiling because I feel like my situation is so similar. I also live individually in a city in Toronto, and I'm doing my best to weave local community, like bringing together literally the people that live on my street and to say there's different ways that we can be together. I've spoken with people who've been hit by hurricanes and what's the thing that matters? And it's it's the level of trust that neighbors have with each other. So because I feel like I'm actually investing and putting down roots in this one particular area, it's I'm, I'm taking my entire culture change toolkit and trying to apply it here. I'm like you, Rehana, I do, I do consulting and I work with organizations to do culture change. And so it's like, how do I take that skill set and, and bring it here? But my biggest classrooms for learning that have always been outside of outside of the, the capitalist world. Um, I also have friends who are having land outside of the city and trying to work and build community with them. I notice that the pressure cooker is heating up. I am also seeing broken systems. And so for me, it's like, okay, let's put money into a retirement fund because that's what I was trained to do. But also this like resource of relationships, true trust, having land, knowing how to be capable of living in community, in harmony, doing regenerative agriculture. These are all the other skill sets that is starting to feel more and more real. Like that's the stuff that will give real safety if these systems do start to crumble. Um, so this is this is just so live for me right now. And I guess the, the question that I would forward into, into this conversation is, how do we learn to do this culture building thing? What are, what, what are the classrooms or what are the mindsets? What, is, what are the conditions that enable people to get better at this skill of finding harmony amongst difference? Yo, I just want to, I want to speak on that one. Uh, it lands also really viscerally my body. Uh, and I also want to pick up Amisha uh, for for calling out care, uh, for speaking into that. Um, oof, that's been in this narrative of making the most mistakes or trying attempting to avail spaciousness for mistakes. What needed to give and and what 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 that invited. What my and this is this is the first time it's like it's landing. I'm having a moment where something is landing for me. And and it was it came to what 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 I was calling out, what I thought was mistakes, was learning how to be cared for. Learning how to be cared for. Uh, the space I was in, the leadership I was in was built on a oopsie was built on an old model, an old way of being uh, that may, might have served like previous generations and stuff, but it was not serving me. And everything in my parenting style, in my style of relationships, in my style of receiving care, in my style of how I even be with myself, uh, how I cared for myself, what I thought was care for myself. Um, yeah, all of these things were, were brought into light uh, in this journey of mistakes and mistakes. And, and, and like the practice that I spoke about earlier that I learned in that leader, the, the courageous leadership course, was this practice of coming home. And the, very briefly, the practice invites you to call upon a momentary ancestor. This can show up as a deity. Uh, it can show up as an, a moment in nature, but it's specifically a moment where you felt most cared for, most seen, most heard, 
most supported, where you really felt uh, something for me, an example of a moment like this, maybe to just give a bit of a frame into it, is like, uh, for me, a big moment of care that I go into is being in the kitchen with my mom. Uh, I don't remember conversation or anything, or, or I may really remember moments where we talk about something, but it was that moment that when I was there, it was after work, my mom really enjoys cooking. She's like, that's her medicine. That's how she cares for herself is by cooking. There's something that happens when she's chopping those onions and doing the things. And being with my mom in that space, I felt most seen. I could tell my mom anything. That's like the, the moment I, ca- I catch my mom that moment where I have to give her my report card. I know that if I catch her there, I'm not going to get no beating. I'm not going to get whooped because she, 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 she's, she's cared for in this moment. I now learned the wording, the articulation of which she felt cared for in that moment. So inviting this moment of being seen, being heard, being supported as if, if you're lying, if you had to rest your back into your seat onto your, or against the wall, you're not like stressing that the wall is going to break or the chair is going to drop. You're really deeply, intuitively resting into that. And for me, inviting that moment or, or reminding my body, invite, in, reminding my spirit reminding my eyes, my ears, my nose, my mouth, that I'm cared for. That is, that's my golden nugget from thousand or a thousand days of mistakes is, is, is letting once, once you're equipped with it, once you just have that seat belt on, once you have that literally seat belt on, whatever, not whatever moment, when moments come that disrupt, that throw you off, when thoughts come, when ideas, memories, imaginations come that throw you off, there's something different in the water. There's something different in how you engage it because you are you are cared for. You are, you engage in it. Like people say, like get to it from a place of love. Like you really invite yourself to 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 be loved. First, start with being loved. And I'm still learning this. I'm still learning what it is to be loved as a parent, what it is to be loved as a facilitator, what it is to be loved as somebody that people draw wisdom and inspiration from, what it, what it even is just to awkwardly, the, the awkward, I'm a, I, I regard myself to be a super awkward person, like, and, and I've learned to like love myself in that and actually like work, in, work with that energy. But it, it's been taking me time and it shows up like with validation issues, or feeling that you are an imposter, like, fuck, who the hell are you to be speaking to all these people type shit? Uh, so all of that shows up as that. And yeah, reminding myself that I'm cared for, that I'm love, that I'm, that I'm enough. Yeah, that, that's, that's been big medicine for me. And I invite the, my life to be shackled and thrown up by the mistakes to come. And I think, yeah. Maybe at the beginning of this conversation, I wouldn't take on the mistakes again, but I think now let's do this for next year as well. Let's let's write the New Year's resolution down. I'm willing to take on another year of making those mistakes just in this conversation and realizing that I realized that I'm loved and that has changed the way I see mistakes, the way I see chaos, the way I see. And and not when, when the chaos comes, it's that moment that I have to remind myself, yo, just remember you loved, remember you loved, remember you, remember you loved. And then attain, get it, and then yeah, deal with the fire. I love you, brother. Take a big up here, yo. feels like such a relief like being in a space like this and um and being in a culture where everyone's not presenting like their best selves and putting on their masks and um you know often that happens even in like circles that are like um more open but yet like people come in and give the most shiny versions of themselves for that time and um, this feels so nourishing and yet um, what I've experienced time and time again um, 
is that sometimes when I like I actually don't mind revealing those other sides of myself but sometimes that leads to leads to more exile um and and that might also be partly because I'm always um in a racial minority like most of the time in the places that I live and so you know and then it's too much something's too much like um but I really feel here like that space of being able to to rest in that messiness and to you know it's it's kind of insane that we we it just this like I don't know when you just imagine this kind of world like in what you see like on the news or what's represented through all the shows that everybody watches that's like filling brains and then actually you realize like the reality of the world that we're actually in and the real lives that we're all experiencing you know and I guess with with what I'm saying about tv it's also like about social media and and actually that real desire just to be more human with each other um and and like how we do that in a way that also um yeah like how do we do that when it's not with the people like next door in a way that's that that kind of offers something that's lasting um so it's not just like you share something and then you go <laughs> like you know but in a way where it actually has like some kind of sustaining quality to it and lasting like change and transformation Yeah. I love what you shared so much, um, Tilani, about remembering that you're held and loved. And when I really hear your question about Amisha, like how to do that in a how to be in relationships like that in a way that's sustaining. Um I'm thinking about a community of practice that Aaron was here and I are a part of called the Jam, and I, it's it's these beautiful week long gatherings of about twenty five people that are it, it it's 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 really a the the container is built for this kind of really open awkward messy. Um, being together. Hitoko's here. She's also a jammer. Um, and like it, it, it's really working at those levels of the trying at least to to look at personal, interpersonal, and systemic fields of transformation and and how they intersect. And here and yeah, yo, yeah, of course, yeah. And there are there are there are gems in all parts of the world and on different themes and in different geographies, but. Underneath it all is that sort of idea of, of, of building beloved community for co-liberation and that idea that um, our, our separateness is, is an illusion. And, and it's part of the design of, you know, the colonial capitalist systems that we've inherited. And so that, so the work of remembering our belonging is as innate and it and and to ourselves and each other is is part of what that 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 what the jam is is reminding us of like trying to help us practice together and 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 part of that is is um i guess like slowing down to whatever is present is is a practice that um is is there and it's it's sure that yeah we've, we've created this container for that and i find it challenging to continue to do that all the time in life um and at the same time like uh, at, at bloom what the, the the company where i work most of us are jammers so we have this practice of like oh when we bump up against a thing um how can we have courage to say the thing that's hard to say and to trust 
that that person's not going to walk away. It's it's a it's it's a it's a, it's it's because it's happened before, and we've returned to one another again and again, even when we've been in those crunchy moments, and that has given us a safety, a sense of safety in that um, we're going to stay on the team, whatever that means. You know, we're going to stay in relationship. Um, and and that that is also because like it's the work of of collaboration that like if you're not free, then I'm there's a part of me that's actually really not also free because and this this connects me to my spiritual practice and and I've been digging deeper into my ancestral my, um, practice or philosophy religion of Sufism and finding so much in that. Uh, worldview that uh, is touching my heart and in that idea that like we are all the divine and that you know when I look at your face you know and Orion like how can I look and see that you are me and I am you and that this you're in a different form and yet the essence of of who you are and who I am is the same and so if I hurt you I'm hurting me um which also reminds me of Ubuntu, like from the lands that you're on, Shivani, and that same philosophy. Um, and I've been, I, you know, I grew up with a lot of fighting in my home. And I'm, uh, it's, it's, so it's, it's sometimes really hard to not feel like, you know, my nervous system is like, this is threatening, you know, when actually it's, it's just my friend telling me, like, <laughs> they didn't like what I did there. Um, I can feel the like tension, you know, in my body that makes me want to run or fight. And so part of my 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 practice is really working through that kind of trauma in my body and reminding myself that it's not a threat, that I'm like safe and held. And but also getting practiced in like dialogue for peaceful change and other conflict mediation tools that allow me to like practice being really curious and asking questions and really like really listening to understand because we all really need to be heard. And I feel like when we're really heard in what's happening and when we're really hearing ourselves, those are conditions for transformation, that it's that we're 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 safe enough to be in the awkward unraveling um in the unknown. Because I think the safety, like Yayo said, there's no safety. I think the the, big, the biggest form of safety we have is our relationship. So learning how to be in good relationship with all the inside messy, awkward things and unperfect things. And also that, that that's true for each of us and that, that that is hard work and it takes time. And a long, long voice notes. I find myself in long voice notes with jammers after 10 years of jamming, like coming back to this like, this sort of like I got your back, um, which is which is really I think special and and sacred. In fact, um, and so that's that's one place I've been practicing being more human and um, feeling what it feels like to be like I love you unconditionally. Like that's such an unfamiliar un un feeling for so many people to to feel actually like you're allowed to be that way and. Your love, my love for you isn't based on what how perform how you perform. Most people aren't raised that way. Schools are not designed to be like that. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think about how I can be like that to my daughter. How can I be like that to myself, to my mother? I think it's hardest in those three relationships, but it it seems to be a work in progress. Hey, oh, and um, yeah, I'm just realizing I made a mistake. Um, so the mistakes roll on. And I realized on the website, it says that this conversation would end at 1230, whereas in my head, it was going to go till 1 p.m. EST. So for another 30 minutes. Um, so if there are folks like Narayan has to hop off, um, there are folks that have to hop off at this point. Um, feel free to do so. Uh, and for those of you that uh We'll be able to stick around. We're going to open it up for more of a, a whole group uh, sharing. If there's questions, if there's comments, um, really whatever else wants to kind of continue this conversation. And, and we're just going to expand and 
um, widen now a little bit. Um, but Narayan, I know you have to hop off. I don't know if you want to do any closing words at this point or. And Amisha. Uh, and Amisha. Are you, are you oh, we both off? got a drop. So yeah, yeah. if we both <laughs> want to share anything at this point. Um, I have to go back to the corporate world. I have a client facilitation that I'm doing where helping people to experience this kind of safety and literally what we're talking about right here, but bringing that into the corporate space. I think it's good work doing the bridging and um, I've really loved helping to hold some of the thread of where we're going here. And it's, it's wild, it's unpredictable. And um, I would love to continue it with each of you in, in the future. Um, on the Miro board, if somebody wants to continue weaving this thread, I would definitely love to come back and, and see that, but um, I'll have to say goodbye. And Thank yeah, you. we can drop a link to your website. And Narayan, do you want us to share your email or anything? Uh, folks that want to connect can reach out on um, LinkedIn, I guess. Thank you, Narayan. And Amisha, would you like to share any closing words or? Just, um, yeah, I really like to be here for the whole thing. And so this is a, a new experience, but um to to kind of dive in and out and um and I I'm I've got my mum in and my nieces in the other room and I promise I'd be an hour. Um and so yeah I guess I guess it's it's just I mean it's an open and evolving question of you know how do we embrace all that we are and and that's um that's the name of the the podcast. I changed it at the beginning of this year because I was like yeah, it kind of speaks more to the questions that I have than the future is beautiful. It's like, you know, how how do we how do we make more space for all that we are and how do we navigate through it all and how do we open to all that we don't know? Um, and so yeah, that's the exploration that I'm in at the moment. And um it's been really beautiful to connect and I, I look forward to connecting to you all more in different ways. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amisha, for being here with within the, the care that you're giving and the busyness that you named. Um, so yeah, much appreciation for that. Um, yeah, and keep coming back. Good love mm -hmm. to have you. And Chevani and Rihanna, are you able to stick around for the final 30 minutes? So I'll-, I'll No, I'm an after party, you know, I'm here for the after party. Oh, Chevani's here for the after party, yes. So I'll loop back to you, too, at the end of the whole group sharing for some closing words. And uh, from here, we'll remove the spotlights and go back to gallery view and uh, open the space. If anybody wants to speak any comments or uh, share any questions or anything that feels like coming out, um, now we'll welcome that. Well, I will start just to keep this beautiful patriarchal tradition of the, the old man talking first. Um, and I, I, I doodle with my mouth. I'm a very oral uh, person, so I'm just going to throw some, some insights that, that came to me after listening to these beautiful people in conversation. And... Um, yeah, it, it stayed in my head, this idea, like, we do need to, to deal with the capitalism that is one of the main pillars of modern life. Uh, <clears throat> that even i absolutely convinced that the system is cracked and is uh, wounded to that. The problem is that it's still falling over us and, and, uh, and we still need to keep an eye so we're not, like... Uh, smashed by by the by the rocks and the pieces of the systems that are crashing over us, and at the same time we we are 
we have the need of start leaving the worlds we want to live in to create a new and um and because we are oftenly trained to do that in isolation like someone put in the in the mirror this no more lonely wolf you know and uh like quoting these or paraphrasing this this hopey prophecy and um but it's hard because we are trained and uh, to to be successful, to be uh, unique, to uh, relate in our exchange of affections, money, or or, or or wisdom in a transactional way instead of like this flow of love. So um, I think that. It, as we walk with one foot in the system because we still need to survive and one foot in the wonder of what is the beauty I want to see in the world and I want to live in the world. Um, <clears throat> we also need to learn what, uh, what Shabani was saying us, uh, how to accept that no matter what we're loved and how do we, and how do we digest that maybe we are not loved the way we want to be loved, but we are still loved. That the, that uh, web of relations that uh, that we are all, always constantly needing in our life because we are social creatures uh, um, sustain us. And sometimes it's messy and it hurts and it doesn't sustain the way we're expecting to be sustained. But for me, that that is what unconditional love means for Rihanna. You no, know? like I know that I'm loved, even though it might not be the the way I need to be held right now. But I could trust that so, somehow my network of relation will hold me up and will not let me drown. And if I learn that it's a mistake to see to to think that everything is gonna be all right all the time, and that we're gonna pursuing or reach that stage of like, well, there's no problems, there's all happiness, and uh, and things are, are are always gonna be shining. Uh, if we accept that that is a mistake, then we could be able to to embrace better those times of like of knowing of messiness of crunchiness of feeling not enoughness no um and accept it as part of the journey that might have no end and maybe that the the new culture of change is like change is always happening and as as we resist the 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 pieces of concrete the ceiling of the system falling over off how we start like growing regenerative like, cultures in the crack, like how we start habitating the spaces that are available and at the same time, like share our grief for what is dying. I think that uh, I'm very curious of how to navigate that with grace and at the same time accepting that uh, being messy sometimes is what is needed. and uh, And and to allow myself to feel defeated and messy and, and shitty and not enough and incomplete, but not, but, but not get, uh, but being aware of how many, often times we get into the loop of the pattern of bringing that into us and, and not seeing the cracks and the opportunity and the, and the regenerative agriculture and the love and the different ways of caring that we have available and are already present there. Okay, doodles with my mouth. Mm -hmm. Something I notice when I reflect on the culture of that conversation um, pulls in a lot of what you were just sharing, Yeo. Um, you know, there was there was playfulness in the beginning, and then there was like some some talk of like mistakes and like openness around mistakes and vulner and then like this you know Amisha just showing up with like raw vulnerability of like this is my life right now you know and and this is like it's not 
it's like a new thing, like a new me that I'm stepping into and a new phase of life that I'm having to navigate. Um, and, and yeah, just like this honesty, call, you know, like it just, it's really presenced for me that, that the way that different people are showing up kind of creates space for others to show up and like build off of that culture. And it, you know, even in, in the space of a single conversation, like I just loved like tracking that thread of like, Hmm, like what's making the conversation, like the energy of this conversation, like move and shift in different ways. Um, and I would just, yeah. So there's like some, some cool threads there. And, and it reminds me of this question that um, actually Sierra asked some of us the other day which is like what is what is our medicine what is your medicine and what is our medicine together and I think yeah like awkwardness can be medicine and and like vulnerability and mistakes can be medicine if we if we let them and are willing to show up with them I just wanted to share something that I was thinking about and is um, perspective that we are in, in this world for luckily <laughs> uh, 70, 90 years. And we have a, a shift of time, time space um, to do, to show, to share, to enjoy, to make mistakes <laughs> and um, to live, in fact, to, to share our uniqueness. Uh, we are somehow like forced to do things in some way a group of people once thought is the right way and Fuck everything, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, we, have a, we, we, we have a short uh, life. We have short time and we have the right to be and kindness and caring begins at home because we cannot give what we don't have. So let's practice and I, I refuse to depend on other people's love. Uh, I receive, I receive it. I am grateful for that love, but I begins at home and home is this body at, at the beginning, um, I mean, this body will, will not be here. Uh, and it's the chance we have to, to share, to share what we are. Uh, I mean, which, which are our expectations? Um, we uh, force our, ourselves to fit in some should be like this, should be like that. So mm, release ourselves from that and mm, self-caring first. Um, I, I felt awkward <laughs> when Shivani brought, um, you brought your mother's memory in the kitchen and um, I've been working for many years now on uh, resting in my own hands because maybe I didn't have my mother's when I was a little girl or not as I wish I did like um, Chesha said. Uh, so we have our own hands, we have our own body, we have our own decisions, we have our own permissions. Mm. And it's from there. And it's uh, like uh, allowing ourselves 
allowing others not to depend on, on an, another human looking at you or another human validating you. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank all of you. There's something um, I would also like to, to share that um, Anna, your sharing has inspired in me. I also felt, uh, I felt a lot when uh, Shivani, you were sharing the uh, story about your mother and the image that came to me through your words um, that she had a practice a daily practice that not only nourished her family, but in that process, it nourished her. It resourced her. You said it was cooking was med her medicine. And, and in that time when she was embodied in her medicine, that she, you knew she was a safe, she was in a safe place for you to come to her for a bad report card or whatever, whatever the thing was, something that you needed to, to talk about where you could be vulnerable and you knew that you would be safe there. And I think about that for myself. What are my medicines that nourish me so that I'm embodied in, in my heart space, I'm full, I can, I can be a, 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 the safest version of myself that I wish to be in this world where people can come to me in their vulnerability and I will hold them and I will hold myself in that too, right? And then I think about that also in like interpersonal and, and in, um, in community groups where we can navigate really difficult challenges and, and all in our, in our nervous systems individually, but also collectively. And then what is the collective medicine that we can have um, thank you so much for sharing that story about your mother. That 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 re really is something um, I'm. Uh, I will take with me. I'm loving this feeling right here. I'm loving how my body feels right here. Um, I think just to very briefly share a little bit more on, on that practice of inviting that momentary ancestor. And that could be a deity. It could be an inner connection with self. It could be a rabbit. It could be a forest. It could be the ocean. It could be somebody. Uh, in a moment with somebody, not necessarily the whole entire person, just a moment with them. Uh, and and the, 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 the second step that speaks exactly into, uh, I'm very grateful for mentioning the nervous system. And I also, in the conclusion of this, so if I don't get it, just remind me, like I want to speak upon like just this fight or this word in the, our, 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 or our choice of words and the actions with regard to maybe systematic work and oppressive systematic work and that relationship. But in the gist of it in now, I want to just like call out the nervous system work and how the biology of change, transformative change, and that segue of self and inviting that momentary where your nervous system is dropped, you are held. And you vocalize what that feels like. You speak it out. Uh, you say it. It feels warm. I feel seen. I feel safe. 
uh, it's like vocalizing uh, in whatever language, in whatever form, uh, outward trajectory or projection of that emotion. In a world where I live and I believe in magic, that is like how you can trick your body, for lack of better words, trick your body, trick your nervous system into then engaging. And, and, and I'm not, I don't have words yet to explain what it's doing outwardly as I'm in process. And I think I'll continuously be in process of inviting that moment to my life. Uh, however, just knowing that my nervous system, there's a bit more space. There's, the, there's a sense of more openness, especially dealing with hectic situations, uh, however they come, whenever they come. Yeah, is 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 something that 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 yeah that's been nourishing me and assisting me in this walk of change, in change through change with change, and specifically in change with like the idea of systematic work and how we how we how we show up in that work, how we show up in these maybe spaces of oppression. I think I would like to humanize these systems to say that we all can't really be doing this. Like we speak about capitalism outwardly as a system, but all of us show up for it and we all participate in it. And for that, I must like create an element of self-hate for myself. And that brings me back to, to like trauma of childhood, of school, where performative validation and all of that shit and, and, and was like seen in over in not healthy ways. Uh, so I wouldn't want to have that relationship even in my activism. I wouldn't have that type of that relationship with even my, my, my ways of being with the system in such a way. And I would like to honor and validate that the act of that like mean coming down my nervous system or inviting that moment of feeling safe or finding safety within community or finding inviting practice of change within people and in, within moments of being with people, non-human and more than human. I think that is how we like at I would like to validate that as activism against capitalism, because I, if I'm engaged in my work, if I'm engaged in this economy, if I'm engaged in all of these things equipped with that, truly that must create some sort of change. So change, maybe not in the ways in which, so validating non-performative change, validating indirect work. So not work that is follows this linear pattern of if I do A, B, and C, then D is the result type of thing. More saying that if I can do this little thing with myself, for myself in this moment, just now, not even wanting to do it next week or maybe tomorrow again, just now, if I can do this now, validating that as the butterfly effect to, to the changes we all want to see in our lives, in all the ways we want to see, in all the ways we want to be with change in our lives, validating it, like, yeah, reclaiming validation and feeling that that is enough, feeling fulfilled as an invitation of a momentary ancestor of love feeling full as my mom's food left us both emotionally and spiritually and as witchy as she was and she's uh yeah that's 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 exactly it yeah for now for me so i just wanted to, to share that part blessings to you Chefani. uh always so beautiful to be with you and Oh, and I dropped links to um, the learning center that uh, Chevani co-runs, the Reimagine Learning Center, um, if anybody wants to check out the space. And it would be wonderful if people end up there, people on this call meet you there at, at your center and, and come to meet you in person and, yeah, bring this connection deeper. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much, Chevani, for being here and sharing your stories and wisdom and uh, for impacting so many people. And um, yeah, much appreciation. And from here, I want to invite Rehana to, to come and share. Uh, if you have any closing words or anything that you'd want to, um, yeah, I don't know, share to uh, bring this part of the micro conference to a close. Uh, you're welcome to do so. Thanks, Dan. Mm.
There's something that um, a practice that I that I try to do regularly is is to look myself in the mirror and tell myself I love myself over and over. Um, and I have a picture of my little girl, my my me as a little girl, on my um, dresser, and I and I go back there and I try to also, you know, remember to tell her how much I love her unconditionally. And it um, reminds me of something I'm remembering around time being um, non-linear. And so all these lives that we've lived, all these timelines are coexistent at the same, same time. And so I I have much to learn about how this quantum and you know very indigenous spiritual realm of time works. Um, but I'm also I'm I'm heartened by how um, we can go back to moments of rupture or where there ha- wasn't care or where the story was implanted around not enoughness, and um, that really hinders our capacity to show up in our fullness and be free and feel feel belonging wherever we are. Um, and and to return to those moments and to intervene as our living ancestor of our younger past version of ourself and to say the words that weren't spoken or to offer the care that wasn't there in our imagination. Um, maybe it's just like a hug or it's I hear you. And or, you know. It's it's okay. It's okay that you made that mistake. It's okay. I still love you. Um, and 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 what I'm learning is that that does actually change the past and the present, which changes the future. And so um, I'm interested in hacking time like like that in in remembering that um, that deep wisdom that Giovanna you're sharing around like. Um, the 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 sort of the 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 unconditional love of the universe or of the mother nature of our um, whatever it is the source of life um, that is that is really there all the time and um, and when I can practice that with myself I know that I can then hold a room of people that are awkward and going through this change with so much like fear and um, desire to do it right and not make mistakes with like a lot more spaciousness um, because there's space in me for that. Yeah, it's, it's been so nice to be here in this space with you and uh, listen and learn from each of your wise hearts and souls. So thank you so much. Uh, Sierra, Eileen, and Dan for organizing this and creating this beautiful, beautiful container for us, for us in this conversation. Hmm. Thank you so much for being here with us and yeah, sharing your love and care and um, yeah, beautiful listening skills and beautiful speaking skills in this space. Oh, and. Thank you all for being here, um, sharing your prayers and your, uh, yeah, beautiful beings uh, with each other, with us in the different spaces you've been in.